Until now, we have discussed prophecies from 18th century BCE Mari. We will now examine later prophecies from Nineveh and its surroundings. As we shall see later, the nature and historical context of this group of prophecies makes them especially relevant for biblical studies. Nineveh was an important city of the Neo-Assyrian Empire. It is also a very important city for modern scholarship because it is the site where the famous library of King Ashurbanipal was discovered. This ancient library contained about 24,000 tablets in cuneiform script. The tablets cover a wide range of genres, from ancient dictionaries to religious and literary texts. Ashurbanipal's library is the richest and most significant source of our knowledge of Akkadian literature. Among the many texts found there, scholars also identified prophetic texts. A few additional prophetic texts were found in the area of Nineveh. These are fragments of ancient prophecy. They date to the Assyrian period, again, around the, the 7th century BC. And communication with the gods, of course, is not just a one-way process. It's not just you praying. They can send messages in the other direction. And in this case, what we have is communications for the benefit of the Assyrian king. We have people who communicate with the goddess. The goddess sends them messages. They put this into to human words, write it on tablets, and that gets sent to the king and they send uh, very important messages of encouragement, perhaps warning, uh, telling them that uh, this is going to happen in their reign. You know, the, the great goddess has told them that they will vanquish their enemies and crush their bones and this kind of thing, very dramatic. To date, 95 prophecies from Nineveh and its surroundings have been found and published. Their most common addressee is the Assyrian king, and their typical theme is the king's welfare. Here is one example. Esarhaddon, king of the lands, fear not. What is the wind that has attacked you, whose wings I have not broken? Like ripe apples, your enemies will continually roll before your feet. I am the great lady, I am Ishtar of Arbella, who throw your enemies before your feet. Have I spoken to you any words that you could not rely upon? I am Ishtar of Arbella. I will flay your enemies and deliver them up to you. I am Ishtar of Arbella. I go before you and behind you. Fear not, by the mouth of Isalatashiat, a man from Arbella. As this text indicates, this prophecy was given by a prophetess from the city of Arbella the modern-day capital of Iraqi Kurdistan. The prophetess speaks in the name of the goddess of Ishtar of Arbella. Ishtar was a prominent goddess in Mesopotamia, associated with fertility, love, and war. Due to her central status, she took the form of many diverse goddesses across Mesopotamia. One of these was Ishtar of Arbella, the patron goddess of the city of the same name. Ishtar, in different embodiments, stands behind most of the Neo-Assyrian prophecies. In this tablet, the prophetess delivers her words of encouragement to King Esarhaddon. She promises him in poetic language replete with imagery that he will defeat his enemies. An important feature of this prophecy is its literary framework. Unlike in Mari, this is not a letter that reports a prophecy, but a prophetic text per se, which reminds us of biblical prophecies. This fact may mean that the Assyrian prophecies were closer to the original formulation than those cited by officials in the Mari letters. This is just a single prophecy, but here a collection of prophecies from uh, these prophetesses in in the city of Arbela, modern Erbil in Iraq, and they're all collected on a single tablet for reasons we're not quite sure, but it tells us uh, what each one has to say, and it gives you the name of the prophetess, even of, of where they're from. So a kind of compendium of uh, the messages sent to the king, so it's taken really very seriously indeed. Neo-Assyrian prophecies appear on two types of tablets. Large tablets that contain collections of several prophecies, and smaller tablets with a single prophecy on each. 
scholars believe that the smaller tablets served as drafts. They were used for recording the words as the prophet spoke them. Then only those prophecies considered important were assembled, copied on larger tablets and archived. The care that was taken to collect and preserve them indicates that they were regarded as valued religious legacy. Such prophecies gained a canonical-like status. According to the rabbinic view, a similar principle existed in ancient Israel. Many prophets arose for Israel, double the number of those who came out of Egypt. However, a prophecy which was relevant for future generations was written down, and that which was not relevant for future generations was not written down. And here is another example of a Neo-Assyrian prophecy. This one is exceptional as it is addressed to the people as a whole rather than just the king. At this point, it is similar to biblical prophecy, yet its contents relate to the king. Listen carefully, O Assyrians. The king has vanquished his enemy. From sunset to sunrise, from sunrise to sunset, your king has trod his enemy underfoot. Ashur has given him the whole world. From the place where the sun rises to where it sets, there is no king to set beside him. He is bright like sunshine. This is the oracle of peace placed before Bel Tabasi and before the other gods. This prophecy is classified as peace prophecy in Akkadian Shulmu. This word is a cognate of the Hebrew word Shalom. Several Shulmu prophecies are known among the Neo-Assyrian prophecies. The term refers to the content of the prophecy which predicts peace and prosperity. In fact, many prophecies that are not explicitly labeled as Shulmu deal with similar topics. They present the Assyrian king as the elect son of the goddess Ishtar and promise that the kingdom will remain stable for coming generations. In some cases, they even depict the kingdom's future in florid terms of cosmic harmony between heaven and earth. This feature is known from some biblical prophecies.